All right, shall we look at some more bad aquariums? Some negative aquariums? Synonyms for crappy. Some cheap aquariums? Some inferior aquariums, some junky aquariums, some lousy, shoddy, subpar, trashy, useless, worthless aquariums. This is what happens when goldfish thrive after being released into the wild. Pictures like this should be in every local fish store in the country. Yeah. Goldfish do go crazy in the wild. Though I wouldn't... <laughs> I, I'm not sure about the messaging here. After they thrive after being released into the wild. Yeah, yeah, because the wild has a lot of resources and space for them. Do not put goldfish in the wild. <laughs> they thrive for a reason, because nobody uh, is able to predate them, because they're not native here, and they just destroy ecosystems in the same way that all the, the other carps do as well. Hi, Grayscale. I hope your day gets better. Let's make it better by looking at some depressing aquariums. Yeehaw. Ever think monster fish hobbyists might be keeping animals for the wrong reasons? I have so many questions. Oh, they're definitely keeping animals for the wrong reasons. Let's be clear. Okay. Unless you run an animal sanctuary, we're all keeping animals for selfish reasons, okay? Your dog, you're being selfish. Your cat, you're being selfish. Hey, maybe your dog's living the best life ever and your cat's not living like that because that is way too chonky for a cat. That's a fat ass cat. That is not good for the cat. But let's say theoretically you're taking the absolute best care of your pet. That <laughs> oh lord, he's sitting. Anyways, you're taking the best care of your pet that anyone has ever taken of a pet. You're still keeping the pet for selfish reasons, right? For the benefits they they bring to you. Anyways, regardless, nobody's in it for the right reasons. Monster fish hobbyists are just kind of like the. I don't even know. The largemouth bass fishermen of the hobby world. I just gotta get something bigger. Just give me the biggest fish I can come across. Give me that largemouth bass. No, I don't wanna know. I don't wanna see any other fish. I ever tell you guys the time I went to a uh, bait shop? Because I was curious. There's some places that will catch bait locally. They'll like throw out a cast net and catch bait locally. And I was like, hmm, I wonder what kind of shiners this guy is keeping on hand as bait fish. I went into the bait shop. And I was like, oh, what, you know, what bait, what bait shot, or what bait do you have? He goes, shiners. I was like, oh, cool. You know, what, do you know what shiners? And he's like, what do you mean what shiners? There's only one type of shiner. And I just, my mind was blown. No, first of all, there's like a thousand. Actually, there's probably more than a thousand species of shiner. And that's just now that we haven't even gone through it. But sure, okay, hypothetically, there's one type of shiner. What do you call that one type of shiner? A shiner. I was like, okay, can I see them? And he's like, yeah, sure. So we go into the back and he shows me the fish and they're golden shiners. Uh, golden shiners are a very common bait fish. They're used everywhere and they end up in lakes everywhere because people use them as bait fish and they escape off the hook. They're very common. They're native here, so they're not as much of a big deal, but they've been spread by us. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So you have, you have golden shiners. And he goes, what the hell is a golden shiner? <laughs> And I was like, okay, thank you for thank you for showing me. So, not lo locally sourced, likely <laughs> likely used as like a likely from a wholesaler. People here use American eels as bass bait. Aren't American eels federally endangered? Not that anyone actually cares, right? Because those meanings, those whole listings mean nothing when it comes to fish. But yeah, they're federally endangered. That's crazy. Um, I've seen similar things where people are using like federally endangered fish as bait. There's a, there's a classic video. There's something called a Chesapeake log perch. This was before they were split. There are a bunch of log perches. They're a type of garter, you know, perch fish that lives on the bottom. And they had yet to split the log perches into different species and determine that, hey, the one in Chesapeake, the Chesapeake log perch, like Maryland, Virginia area and South Pennsylvania, this one is endangered. Right? It hadn't been listed yet. There's a picture of a guy using a Chesapeake log perch as bait because he's from upstate New York. 
In upstate New York, the common log perch, different species, is common everywhere. They call them uh, ground pike, and they use them as great bass bait because ground pike just make great bass bait. The bass can see them easy, and apparently they live a while on the hook. And so this guy goes to his local stream, nets up some log perch to use as bass bait, you know, now that he's moved from upstate New York to, you know, Maryland or whatever, and uh, uses it as bait. This is now a species, by the way, that we think there are less than a thousand of the individual in existence. And there's a guy using it as bass bait. Very funny. Do you think people like Mr. There's Only One Shiner would care if that eel is endangered? I think they might care if you informed them in the proper way. You know what I mean? I think we too often dismiss people as like enemies of the environment and nature. And there are people who certainly won't give a shit no matter how you phrase it to them. But I think there are also people who are like decent, genuine human beings who just were raised fishing. The things that they know are what they were, you know, they were raised fishing. They know how to do fishing. They know that a, a Atlantic Menhaden or is called a peanut bunker. Because for some reason we call them peanut bunkers. But it is crazy. I mean, it's not the individual's fault. It's really government-wide inefficiencies. But it is crazy the difference in how fish are treated to other animals. Did you guys know that in New Jersey, if you buy, let's say you buy a million dollars worth of land, like five acres in rural New Jersey, it's absolutely gorgeous, it's got a house, a huge property, okay, you spend a million dollars on it, all right? And your home and the land gets inspected by the state, and they find an endangered frog, I think, let's say, a spade foot. It might be a toad. I'm not sure. Let's say they find the eastern spade foot or whatever on your property, okay? You are no longer allowed to build anything. You are no longer allowed to modify anything. You own the property. You're not getting your money back. You spent a million dollars, but your property is now under like the strictest regulations in existence that the government has to offer because they found one frog. Okay. Meanwhile, in Montgomery, New Jersey, not to harp on this, in Montgomery, New Jersey, you can pour out the chlorine water from your pool directly into a stream which has threatened fish in it, and you are legally allowed to do that. Like, the government knows that you're doing it and has no problems with it. It is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. The, the differences in how different animals are treated. I don't know what happened with fish along the way that no one cares, but truly no one cares. My Animal Crossing Ray Tank. <laughs> I always thought that when I played Animal Crossing. I think when Animal Crossing was popular, a bunch of people sent me their, uh, their aquariums from in the game. Yeah. Boo Animal Crossing for their abusive fish tanks. <laughs> if you, you can put like the most giant fish in this tiny tank. Animal Crossing, it's funny. My fishbowl tipped over and landed upside down. I don't even know what to do now. Uh, slide like a pan under, I guess, and flip it. Or probably just flip it back as quick as possible. I mean, like, you own more water, right? Also, the fact that you not only have a fishbowl, that the water is pink, there's a goldfish this large in it, but the tag is still on the bowl. Just the levels of no shits given is insane. The only time I remember the government caring about protecting a fish was some pretty blue cave fish halted an entire mining operation. You're right. Cave fish, for some goddamn reason, are the only non-game fish that the US government has ever put money and care into. Cave fish are protected like if the freaking, if the Hoosier cave fish goes extinct, the American dream dies. That's how America protects the cave fish. And there's no economic benefit to it. It's not like protecting the Great Lakes from carp where it's like, oh man, we need to protect our fishing industry. They get nothing out of protecting the cave fish. Just for some reason, the governments in the states that have cave fish are really intent on protecting the cave fish. And good on them. It makes it a little harder for me because my bucket list item, one thing that I want to chuck off my bucket list, is to photograph all of North America, or I guess I should say, all of the United States cave fish. I believe there's seven. And there are three that you can catch on the surface. Karst cavefish, spring cavefish, and swamp fish. I can catch all of those on the surface. They come up in springs and such. 
Then there's the underground ones, and you've got like the southern and northern cave fish or whatever. Those aren't a big deal. Ozark crayfish, pretty rare. I think you need permission from someone to get into the cave in the first place. And then you've got like the Hoosier cave fish, which there's like 40 of them in existence, and it's protected by uh, like armed guard at all times. Needless to say, it's going to be difficult to work my way in there, but I will try my best. It would be so cool to have a video working with cave fish. I want to do a video on cave fish. I did that one rare fish video, but I want to do more stuff with cave fish. Why do my sister's fish keep dying? Posted in r slash fish. Hey, I like that subreddit. That's lovely. Nope, no idea. Why would you keep... No. These fish look like they have everything. I mean, they've got this giant home, an entire bowl of water. They've got this beautiful gravel to look at. They've got no filter or heater to really hold them back. You know, no bubbler to get in their way when they're swimming. Cause like, who invented that thing? Right, they've got an abundance of invisible plants in the tank. I mean, what could have possibly gone wrong with this tank? I mean, truly, I, it looks like perfect conditions. It must be the pet store's fault. They must have sold you a faulty fish. It's a diseased fish, I guess. It's really the only explanation I could come up with. My housemate's tank. He's planning on putting fish in it. I have a 55 gallon tank. Well, I suppose dependent on the fish you put in, it's not that bad. He just put some model cars in there and you know, it is what it is. He wants a model car tank, why not? Whatever, man. Model car tank, cool. Good job. Friend is in a perpetual cycle of letting their tank sit until all the fish die, and then she'll reset the tank and replace the fish. This is the third time it's been like this. Yeah, you really gotta stay on top of tanks, man. I sympathize. I set up that 10 gallon back there like three weeks ago, and because it's right in front of the window and I don't have uh, drapes or anything, that thing gets algae like crazy. Like I have to clean out the algae every like three days or it will get overrun by algae. And now this is the time where an inexperienced aquarium creature uh, keeper would go to the pet store and ask for an algae eater and come home with a pleco and put a pleco in their tent now. That was enough crappy aquariums for the Whoa. day.